To get a texture more interesting than lightly embossed foam, we're going to need to solve a few problems with the way that I use texture rollers. 1. Find mediums that actually take the texture. 2. Get deep detail that is more than surface level. And 3. Make immersive streets that don't look like a flat battle map. Doing so required research, but the necessary techniques are simple and quick. Figuring out what material and technique you want to use is much more subjective than I wish it was. I set out in this video to demonstrate some different ways to make cobblestone, but I stumbled upon hurdles that aren't inherent to the materials, but rather my own workflow and skill limitations. Take Sculpey. I found kneading the material exasperating, and its sticky, crumbly nature didn't help. I know it could work wonders, like an RP Archive's City Street tiles, but I'm not him, and it didn't vibe with me. Similarly, I was excited to report that 3D printed plastic doesn't have near the problem sticking to clay that green stuff roll rollers do. Except, then the second test 3D printed roller proved equally sticky. The Elegoo ABS-like resin doesn't appear to stick, but that's more of a personal discovery than universally applicable advice. Speaking of discoveries, a non-stick roller mishap on filming day forced me to embrace the sticky resin roller. I learned that foam clay, while liquid slime and slow hands, becomes surprisingly cooperative with the firm Yank. Frustrated, jerky roller movements actually worked best, and a quick torch-textured roadbed provided extra grip for the clay. All this is to say, there is no replacement for actually doing the crafting. Tutorials and videos are launch pads, not blueprints. You have to get your own hands dirty to find your own best practices. Okay, on to the actual build. Pinterest research revealed the unexpected beauty of ungraded urban cobblestone paths. Worn by feet and carts, intentionally sloped for drainage, and nestled upon irregular terrain, they're a symphony of variety. Perhaps it's this anti-modernity that draws us to the medieval aesthetic in the first place, with its cobblestone paths standing in stark contrast to our smooth, modern streets. In that vein, I noticed that while the uneven underlying foam required multiple passes of the rollers, that those multiple passes created uneven stonework, whispering of history, repairs sourced from different stones and the passage of time, Plus, the roller's own pattern, in rolling over itself, broke the monotony and added a natural randomness. I didn't find much evidence for raised sidewalks. The ones that I did looked pretty modern, but without them, the roads felt visually flat. This logic, along with the 3D printed elements coming up later, aims to inject some much needed detail and life into the scene. Okay, so here I'm using a hand torch. The uh, nice thing about this is, A, it helps get rid of all the little knife marks that created wisps of foam that are inevitably happen when you cut foam like this. And it also, like I said earlier, helped the clay to grab onto the foam with a bit more grip. When I did the sidewalks later, I actually ended up having to glue the foam down since it didn't have the same treatment. So, where'd the footage go? Well, suffice to say, I got really frustrated with all these experiments. <laughs> While it uh, started out as a, let's try out some things, figure out what works, and then record what works for everyone else, the uh, reality of it ended up being a whole bunch of experiments with a whole bunch of frustration. So, uh, here I am recreating it for you. Nice thing is, very simple. Just I'm just squishing the clay onto the foam, smoothing it out as best I can with my fingertips, using a little bit of water, Help make sure that the rollers that I'm going to put on in a second don't stick. There's aforementioned not ABS plastic resin roller. And here I go. I use this little roller to ensure two things. One, that the foam is on an even layer across the whole thing so it doesn't take forever to dry. And two, that anywhere that the wider roller doesn't hit will still have texture. And as a happy benefit, that texture will end up actually looking like intended historical detail, like repaired stone or whatnot. I was almost frustrated how well this worked. Just after all that research, yanking some stuff down, pressing it roughly, and then quickly rolling the rollover, and kabam. Just looked great. Barely near what required. It's hard not to be precious about the detail that you're adding, um, not wanting to roll over it with a roller again, but I promise. The more you roll over the previously rolled work with a new roller, the more it's going to look like it was meant to be that way. And here's where the real benefit is of all these experiments. I have tried many times to trim off uh, excess foam clay work with this knife and always end up accidentally ruining part of the texture because when I pull smoothly, it ends up pulling the texture too. 
whereas a quick, frustrated chop, 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 which is like the worst knife technique you can use, works really well for the swell clay. It's what it wants. And I wouldn't have known that unless I had done those personal experiments. Yeah, here's the uh, foam clay not adhering, which ended up being okay, because let me sneak this tree in. I ended up actually really liking the effect of the tree pushing up the sidewalk. Um, I live in an urban area, and trees do this all the time. Their roots get bigger and push the sidewalk around them up and around. Imagine it makes hell for wheelchair users, but looks interesting. Also, nice thing about foam clay, you can easily make repairs by just adding more foam clay. It fills in nicely, and if you use the same texture roller, it's very hard to notice that you've done anything. And here's the other nice thing about foam clay. When it's fully cured, it cuts very easily, like normal foam. And so I'm able to exactly cut out this cutout for my sewer grate. And there's no way I could have gotten that neat looking with trying to make the clay go around it. And of course, I'm doing this for 3D printed elements. But there's no reason you couldn't have your own sculpted elements that you add to yourself. Other nice thing about the nature of the foam clay, it does reactivate if you get water on it. That being said, it will reactivate a little bit with the glue, and so the glue actually helps it to bond better. This is intended to be part of a larger display. As such, I don't want to make a cool detail that's supposed to be interesting looking, blocking players be able to build the play. Painting was very simple. Quick dust of a tan colored spray paint and a uh, lacquer, the spray paint to give a sense of stony grayness to it and the lacquer to keep it from reactivating the paint. After that, just put some tin grout, wear a respirator unless you wish to have concrete lungs and uh, some scenic sealant. There we are. I decided I wanted to differentiate the sidewalk a little bit, so I threw some gray-white oil paints onto it and used the same gray-white oil paint with a bit more brown to unify the colors of the brass lamp posts and the trees. Let's spin it around, take a look at it. 